tonight, from the wonderful world of Disney, the story of Chango, guardian of the Mayan treasure. eastern tip of Mexico, a jungle-covered sum of land known as the Yucatan Peninsula juts out into the Caribbean toward Florida. Well over a thousand years ago, as the first great builders in the Western Hemisphere, the Mayans of Yucatan were creating large and impressive cities, from Palenque in the south to Chichen Itza in the north. One of the smaller of these, called Tulum, now only a ruin, Perches where the jungle meets the sea in that part of the peninsula called Quintana Roo. The skies over the surrounding jungle are ruled by the Harpy Eagle. Today the great bird was hungry, and right at this moment his target was a tribe of spider monkeys. and the treetops soon return to normal. In the jungle, though, just staying alive was a full-time occupation. And every one of the 30-odd members of the tribe had to keep a constant lookout for danger, no matter how relaxed they seemed to be. youngsters in the tribe, and this one, clinging to his mother's back, was still young enough to be almost as helpless in the trees as a human baby. Like all the young of his kind, he wasn't just physically dependent on his mother, but emotionally dependent too. That's the basic fact of spider monkey child psychology. So this young fellow would need lots of love and attention for many months yet. he grew to be quite a big boy. Although he hadn't completely overcome his dependence on his mother, yet. But he was big enough to be allowed an occasional exploration on his own, providing he didn't go too far. conflict in any spider monkey's makeup is the one between caution and curiosity. And the first time he ever saw an anteater, curiosity proved the more powerful. Peter's dinner was another thing entirely, especially when you were sitting right in the middle of it. Coatimundis, cousins of the raccoon, 
and not exactly the best-tempered animals in the jungle. But in between family squabbles, they seemed to be finding things to eat, which reminded the young monkey that he was getting hungry, too. safer place to find a meal. And besides, he was getting lonesome for his mother. First, of course, he had to find her. But in the gathering winds of an approaching storm, that wouldn't be so easy. morning the storm had passed. Cold and frightened, but most of all lonely, the monkey woke from an exhausted sleep to hear something coming toward him. Somehow, in spite of his fear, he sensed warmth and friendship, and that was what he needed more than anything. His rescuer's name was Ramon, and he'd been out here looking for the fish net which had blown loose in the storm. Ramon was a full-blooded Mayan boy, and he knew all about being an orphan in the jungle. His parents had both died when he was very young. Ever since, he had been the ward of the man who'd been their closest friend, the man he knew only as Uncle Carlos. Uncle Carlos wasn't home right now, and there was no telling how he might feel about adopting a monkey into the family. Meantime, though, the little fellow was sure to be hungry, and there was certainly no harm in taking care of that. Uncle Carlos lived just outside the ancient Mayan city of Tulum. Between them, they shared the job of greeting tourists who came visiting the ruins. But Uncle Carlos took most of their living from the jungle. Many kinds of men had come to the jungle for many reasons through the years. But Carlos was the rare exception who had found a home here. No one ever asked him why. That was his business. There were rumors, though, that he was actually a rich man with a fortune tucked away somewhere. By now, the new arrival had a name, Chango. 
the Spanish word for monkey, and he was being settled down for a nap. Uncle Carlos could see he already felt right at home. So even if he'd wanted to, which he didn't, he wouldn't have had the heart to turn him out. Of course, living in a new home with a new family was going to mean a few big changes in Django's way of life. And at dinner that evening, he got his first lesson in what human beings considered polite mealtime behavior. No, Django! He was used to the casual table manners of the treetops, where you just helped yourself to whatever was in reach. Here, it seemed to Chango, you had to fight for everything you got. for Uncle Carlos and Ramon, especially now during the rainy season when Carlos' work kept him away from home for much of the time. But there was always a hearty breakfast of fresh fish from the nearby lagoon. Naturally, Chango hadn't eaten all night, so he was hungry again. But he wasn't the only one attracted by the tantalizing aroma from the cooking fire. This was a young Marguerite, Apparently, another orphan from the storm. What's the matter, Jungle? Taking in strays wouldn't get to be a habit. But who could say no to a hungry kitten? Go on, feed him. Gay was too shy to wait around for seconds. But even so, Chango sensed the chance to make a new friend, and he didn't hesitate to follow. Ramon wasn't worried, though. He was sure Chango knew where home was, and he'd be back. Of course, he still hadn't had any breakfast, so friendship was going to have to wait, but only for a few minutes. For a monkey in the jungle, breakfast was never far away. In the midst of plenty, Chango could afford to be picky. And that was the one he picked. The trouble was, this was a sapodilla fruit, and its juice, when exposed to the air, has the peculiar property of becoming something very much like chewing gum. It wasn't long before Chango had reduced himself to a small, furry disaster area. To the Marguerite, who, like any other cat, was almost a fanatic about personal cleanliness, this was an irresistible challenge.
so began a strange jungle friendship between a pair of mismatched orphans drawn together by chance and their common need for companionship. By afternoon, their wanderings had brought them back inside the ruins of Tulum. And it was here that the Marguerite found what looked to him like a good place for an orphan kitten to make his home. Sunset marked the end of a perfect day. Chango would be welcome at the Marguerite's any time, but he already had his own home with Ramon and Carlos, and that was where he headed as the evening shadows closed in. The human part of his family had been working hard all day, repairing some minor damage the storm had done around the house. They were ready for a good night's sleep. Well, so was Chango, but not in that basket. that followed, they slipped back into the rainy season routine. Ramon worked hard to keep the vegetable patch from being overgrown, while Uncle Carlos made his jungle rounds. One day, not far from home, Carlos was surprised to meet some old friends, a team of archaeologists led by Dr. Manuel Ortega, who'd worked in the neighborhood last year. Carlos welcomed them back and hoped the weather wouldn't interfere with their work. Another big storm or two might still hit before the rainy season ended. Carlos was a chiclero, and his working days were spent finding mature sapodilla trees and tapping them to harvest the chicle latex, which is used as the basis for chewing gum. In each tree, he made a series of slanted cuts which formed a channel for the chicle to run down into a container below. He would be back the next day to pick it up. Ramon began his daily chores by setting out the guest register to be signed by tourists visiting the ruins. After that, usually with lots of help from Chango, he did the housekeeping. When he was lucky, he got time to do some reading, which invariably put Chango right to sleep. Most important of all, though, was the job of boiling down the chicle as Uncle Carlos brought it in. After it had boiled long enough to drive out most of the liquid, what was left in the pot was a giant gumball, still unflavored, of course. Then it was packed into wooden molds and was ready for sale to the chewing gum factory. Every so often they accumulated enough to make a trip there worthwhile. Normally Ramon went along, but today he had decided to stay home and keep Chango company. He didn't even have time for some fishing. As it turned out though, he would have been a lot safer if he had gone with Uncle Carlos. Chango and the Marguerite, as usual, followed Ramon as far as the banks of the lagoon. 
From experience, though, they knew he'd be busy here for quite a while, and there'd be plenty of time to go off and do some exploring. If Ramon had only been interested in spearing his dinner, he'd have been through in just a few minutes. What always kept him here was his fascination with the ever-changing pageant of life in the lagoon. For an orphan monkey, Chango had been very lucky. He not only found himself a new family, but the little cat had become a special friend, too. Like all of his kind, Chango was always eager to make new friends. And the appearance of a raccoon family down below looked like the chance to do just that. The Marguerite was naturally a bit more cautious, so he'd just wait to see what kind of welcome Chango got. As a matter of fact, he got no welcome at all. The raccoons didn't even seem to know he was there. After a while, there was nothing to do but give up and move on. As it happened, Django was out ahead, and he never noticed that the Marguerite had taken a route that had brought him face to face with a bad-tempered dragon, an iguana. Since there was only room for one-way traffic along the branch, somebody was going to have to back down. Apparently, that had to be settled the hard way. Well, this could go on all day. The Marguerite finally decided to take an alternate route. would lead him within a short distance of the archaeological dig where the men were busy excavating an ancient royal burial ground. There, an employee named Luis had just sneaked away from the camp. Luis had spent his life on the fringes of the jungle, but he'd never gotten used to it. He'd been brought up to believe in all the Mayan legends of the goblins and demons that haunted the jungle, and he was terrified of them especially the bloodthirsty Xtabai. Luis had braved the jungle and Xtabai to hide a cache of jewel relics he'd stolen from the dig. He planned to smuggle them out later.
Luis already had a long history of bongo theft and petty schemes gone wrong. But black marketing relics was a federal offense. If the boy had seen him, he was in trouble. Again. He couldn't afford to let anyone get in his way. arrived to visit the ruins. Louise would have to wait for another day. The next morning, Uncle Carlos and Ramon got ready for a trip to the city to lay in supplies. Ramon, can I call our touch? Hello. This time, Ramon would have to go, too, because Uncle Carlos would be needing his help. But there was just no way to take Chango. To make sure he stayed out of trouble, they'd leave him locked in the house, along with plenty of food to last the day and the night they'd be gone. Naturally, Ramon couldn't help worrying a little. But if he'd even guessed at the adventures that lay just ahead for Chango, he would have worried a lot more. Ramon, vámonos. Chango didn't show up for the usual rump that morning, the Maguey finally came looking for him. Of course, he couldn't know that Chango had been a little greedy. He didn't every scrap of food Ramon had left for him at one sitting. And now he was back in bed, sleeping it off. in the day when Chango finally woke up. Getting out of the house was no problem. But where was Ramon? Uncle Carlos? The Maguey? There wasn't a sign of anyone. For the young monkey, being alone turned the world into a hostile and frightening place. The closest thing to company he could find was the weather old Mayan statue of the god Chaak Mol. All he could
could do was wait. When morning came, he was still waiting. If he'd only known it, the Marguet had spent the night in the jungle nearby, as he often did. But Django didn't know much about what happened outdoors at night. All he knew was that the house was silent and empty. And he was still alone. Chango was already badly shaken, and the sight of a boa constrictor was almost one shock too many. For a moment, he just couldn't move, and a moment was all the boa needed. Chango's day had started off badly and gotten worse by the minute. But now, finally, he saw something that looked encouraging. The archaeologist's camp. There were people here, and he knew from experience that people were friendly. I want to try to send sight along the tree by tomorrow. Si, senor. No. How do you do? Ah, caray. ¿Te gusta mi café, Changuito? Well, they were friendly, all right, but they weren't his people. He just had to keep on looking. Maybe he should try inside the tent. The first tent had offered nothing of interest, but the second one, which was shared by Luis and another workman, was irresistible to his monkey curiosity. For a little while, Chango forgot all about his search. Patron, patron, venga para acá. 
Luis was away on an errand in the city right now. But he'd be in big trouble when he got back. Because what Chango had found, carelessly crammed into the top of his duffel bag, was a sack of stolen relics, obviously destined for the black market. So Chango was something of a hero. But he'd rather have found his people. And as soon as the excitement had died down and he was outdoors again, he headed back into the jungle to try to find them. Of course, he couldn't know that, like Luis, they were far away in the city. For Ramon and Uncle Carlos, two cold bottles of pop were the last item of business. For a pair of jungle dwellers, a rare and welcome luxury. Then it was time to head for home. Here was Luis's chance to ask about the boy he'd seen in the jungle. He was nobody, the friend told him, an orphan. But the old man was another matter. He looked poor, but everybody knew he was actually a rich man with a secret treasure hidden somewhere in the jungle. Adios. Ramon, ven. Mira. It was the footprint of a jaguar. Ramon had been worried enough when he'd found Chango missing from the house, but now he was really frightened. Still, there was a chance he might be alive and somewhere nearby. All they could do was look and hope. And to cover more ground, they headed in separate directions. By now, there wasn't a spot in the neighboring jungle that Chango hadn't covered in what was beginning to look like a hopeless search. Meanwhile, Luis had just arrived back at camp to a reception he hadn't been counting on. He'd be taken to the police first thing in the morning. For now, though, he'd have to be kept in his tent under guard. Fortunately for Luis, archaeologists don't make the best jailers. He was afraid of the jungle, but he was even more afraid of the law. And if he could just make it down the trail to the old Chicleros place, he could steal his money and his truck and be not only free, but rich. Buenas tardes, señor. Buenas tardes. 
Obviously, if the old man had money, the boy would know what it was, and he'd be easier to deal with. So when Carlos explained he was looking for a pet monkey, Luis sent him off toward the archaeological camp to get him out of the way. Of course, he never stopped to think what would happen when he got there. Better get the trenches covered, Raul. Si, sí, senor. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, Carlos. It was only a few minutes later that Carlos told Dr. Ortega he'd just seen Luis in the jungle. What happened after that was inevitable. Luis is gone. Raul, get some of the men and let's go after him. He might be dangerous. into. The jungle had been bad enough, but here in Tulum he'd blundered into the haunt of every Mayan demon he'd ever heard of. And at least one more he hadn't. Too. And Luis was back in custody. But there was just one thing Dr. Ortega couldn't understand. What had Luis wanted from the boy? There is a rumor that I have money. Come on, I'll show you. had been true all along. There was money. Carlos had been saving it ever since he'd adopted Ramon, looking toward the day when the boy would complete his education. Nothing much has changed for Ramon since then, except his future. Because thanks to Uncle Carlos' careful planning, he knows that one day he'll go on to the university in the city. 
is still ahead of him. And for now, he's just a typical boy, anxious to get home from school every day and join his playmates. Two of the most unusual playmates a boy ever had. And certainly one of the most unusual playgrounds. 